What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am back with another 2024 NFL Draft Divisional Draft Class Grade video. If you are new to the channel, I create weekly football content and just wrapped up the AFC West. So in this video, we are going to start with the AFC South, with the first team being the Houston Texans. And to me, I think they had themselves a very solid draft. So with the first pick that they had in the second round, um, they selected Kamari Lassiter, who is a fundamentally sound press corner who does a great job jabbing receivers off the line of scrimmage, flipping his hips, um, very quick to diagnose routes and off coverage and zone looks. So not only is he very versed working in press man coverage, but he is also a phenomenal zone coverage defender. Um, he is typically not the type of ball hawk that you would want in Kamari Lasseter. Um, he actually had one interception in 44 games at Georgia, but sometimes that could be a bit misleading if balls aren't targeted their way that much. But he does put himself in the best position to make plays. Very, very competitive at the point of catch. You know, one of the um, necessities that the Texans needed to look into the draft is finding a running mate for Derek Stingley Jr. And I believe that the Texans did a great job taking care of that, just giving him a running mate. So very feisty corner, super physical to hang in in man coverage and also play in zone coverage. So based off his versatility, top 10 corner in the draft. So that was a solid pick for the Houston Texans. And then with their second pick in the second round, they selected tackle Blake Fisher, who I believe is also a top tackle in the draft. May need to work on some technique that he would need to work on, but overall, solid tackle. And think this was a great job for the Texans to invest in the line to protect C.J. Stroud for the future. Fisher started 26 games at right tackle and one game at left tackle for Notre Dame. Great pop and flashes the ability to move defenders off the ball in the run game. He tends to give up too much ground initially, but did do a better job of working his hands inside and digging in and recovering last season. Um, Titus Howard missed 10 games with two different injuries last season. So having Blake Fisher coming in at right tackle, ton LT at left tackle, I believe Howard can probably move to left guard where he may fit the best to solidify the offensive line. But overall, I think it was a solid pick getting Blake Fisher, who I believe can be a starting lineman for the Texans. And I think the Texans are in a great position to not only protect their franchise quarterback in C.J. Stroud, but also become a force offensively in the NFL in the upcoming 2024 season. Then in the third round, they selected Kalen Bullock, safety out of USC. He is actually one of my favorite safeties in the 2024 draft. Very rangy, likes to be competitive at the point of catch, extreme length, and does a great job being a pure center field safety. Um, whenever I see Kalen Bullock play, he reminds me a lot like Xavier McKinney. Covers a lot of ground, great sideline to sideline ability. He's someone that you could trust as a last line of defense. So if the opposing offense is going through the defense, Kalen Bullock is someone that can catch you from behind if you get past the defense. Um, he may be one of the top ball hawks in this draft. Um, great playmaker, picked off five passes in 2022. Like I said before, competitive at the point of catch. Um the one knock on him is his slight frame, 6'2", 188 pounds. So if an offensive lineman gets to the second level and blocks him, they're going to give up a lot of yards. So his frame is definitely a concern as he tends to get wiped out on plays. But I think this was a great pick for the Texans to not only boost up their secondary, but Kalen Bullock is going to be a force as a center field safety and probably – um. That and I believe selecting Caleb would probably allow Jimmy Ward to, you know, play the best, maybe like working the nickel. And I believe, you know, solidifying the secondary and getting Lassiter and then getting Bullock. The Texans not only are going to become a force offensively, but I think they're going to be a solid, solid defense in the 2024 draft. I mean, 2024 season. Then with their fourth round pick. 
they selected Cade Stover, tight end out of Ohio State. Top five tight end in the draft. Very instinctive open field runner who breaks some tackles and definitely has the ability to make defenders miss. He ran really well at the combine and definitely has great speed to play down the seams. Great hand-eye coordination, body control to make tough catches. He works his hands inside and moves his feet as a blocker. So he's someone that you can trust working as an inline tight end or being a you know great pass catcher when he's going to have some assignments to work down the seam. But overall, solid pick by the tight end as they're starting to boost up the offense. Offense, And then in the sixth round, they select the linebacker Jamal Hill out of Oregon. Um, I think this is where they start to kind of increase the depth, maybe on special teams and add depth at the linebacker position. Then with their second pick in the sixth round, Jahar Jordan, running back out of Louisville. Um, he is a big play threat waiting to happen. Um, defenders seem to underestimate his burst and tends to take poor pursuit angles on him, which makes him get a ton of yards. He could definitely make defensive backs miss without losing too much momentum and can definitely make the first person miss when he's trying to avoid a tackle. But overall, um, the Texans do have Joe Mixon, and I'm sure that the Texans can get a bit creative and probably have Gerard Jordan on kickoff and punt return duties as he did average 28 Point five yards per kickoff return and return two kickoffs for touchdowns at Louisville. So definitely going to be a big play threat on special teams as well as adding depth to the running back position. Seventh round, Solomon Beard adding um, edge depth, active hands, great length to keep blockers off his frame, rushing after the passer, great motor, relentless pure effort and does a great job, you know, rushing the passer and did force four fumbles in 2023. Then with their second pick in the seventh round, they selected defensive tackle Marcus Harris out of Auburn. He's at his best slipping blocks, getting into gaps and making plays in the backfield. So I think this will be a huge help for the Texans as they did get gash a bit um, against the Ravens. As you know, the Ravens were just running the ball down their throat. So definitely boosting up the interior defensive line was a great, you know, smart idea for the Texans. And then last but not least, with their last pick of the 2024 draft, Ladarius Henderson, offensive tackle of Michigan. Um, overall, I think the Houston Texans had a solid, solid draft. Lasseter could gonna be a day one starter in the secondary. Blake Fisher is gonna Definitely find his way on that offensive line. Probably comes week one. Kellen Bullock, pure center field safety, who I believe is my probably top three, top four safety in this draft. So great pick. And then, then they started to kind of, you know, build up the depth of this team. But overall, I think the Houston Texans had a really solid draft and also getting Stephon Diggs in the offseason. So not only did they have a solid offseason, I believe they added some quality players in the 2024 NFL draft. So the draft class grade that I will give the Houston Texans is a B plus. Um, I kind of wish they could have gotten a D tackle a bit earlier in the draft, but they did take care of that position later on in the draft. But overall, a solid B plus for the Houston Texans. Now, the second team that I'm going to get into is the Indianapolis Colts, who I also believe had a pretty good draft as well. In the first round, pick 15, they selected Edge Latu Latu out of UCLA and the first defensive pick in the 2024 draft. Latu is such an outstanding hand-fighting Edge who slips past blocks gets into the backfield and closes very well, whether he's rushing the passer or defending the run. But regardless on wherever he is lined up, he is going to get into the backfield quite easily, especially due to his explosive hands and getting past the offensive linemen. Um, he recorded 34 tackles for loss and 23 and a half sacks over the past two seasons. Some have their order of who may have been the best edge in this draft class. Some had Dallas Turner, some had Jared Verse, some had Latu, but I can definitely understand the Colts going for Latu. He's just a just pure edge in this class and a pure edge just in general. 
Um, he does a great job just quickly redirecting inside after starting off upfield, tracks the quarterback, and falls back inside when the quarterback starts to step up. So he does have a relentless motor and just has an eye for the quarterback and just applying pressure and getting sacks. Um, the Colts base is going to be is a 4-3 defense, so just having them adding another pass rusher off the edge after missing on a few previous selections in the second round. Um, but Latu is a pro-ready edge in this draft class. The Colts did post 51 sacks last season, which is the fifth best in the league, but finding a potential premier defensive end in the league where nearly every team is having a three-person rotation is smart T-building. So the the Colts are going to have a nice rotation of edge rushers, and especially when you're playing in the AFC South, you're going against C.J. Stroud twice a year, Lawrence twice a year, Will Lev is twice a year. So just trying to find ways to apply pressure to the quarterback and getting a great pure edge who may probably be, if there's like a 1A, 1B, 1C, like arguably a probably like a number one edge rusher in this class, depending on who you ask. So this was a solid pick for the Colts, just getting a top edge in this with that pick. Now, in the second round, they selected wide receiver Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. And man, I've got to tell you, I was very surprised that he lasted this long. Me, I did make mock draft videos and I had Mitchell late first round, probably towards the Bills. But I am very shocked by the fall off of Mitchell lasting this far in the 2024 NFL draft. I am not too sure what may have caused this, but the Colts did get a great steal adding this pass catcher and adding him to a phenomenal um, offensive Colts team. I mean, Shane Steichen is a phenomenal play caller. Then you have Anthony Richardson back and healthy, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Josh Downs. Um, I think they're going to have a great rotational wide receivers and I believe Mitchell is gonna just take the top off of this offense he ran a 4.34 40 yard dash and does a great job tracking the deep ball very smooth transitioning upfield and a threat to pull away from pursuit after the catch I, I am very excited for this Colts offense um Mitchell is arguably probably a top five receiver in the draft top six but he's definitely a top 20 overall player on like probably in any big board you look at um and then Mitchell will definitely line up opposite of Michael Pittman Jr and then with Josh Downs in the slot and using his speed and frame to take the top off the defense the Colts wanted to add speed at receiver in the offseason and they did just that with probably one of the best value picks in the entire draft this Colts offense is going to look really good this upcoming season season Anthony Richardson Jonathan Taylor um, then you have Michael Pittman, Mitchell, Josh Downs, and you have Alec Pierce. Like this is going to be a nice offense. So great steal for the Colts in the second round, selecting Mitchell. Third round, Matt Gungalves, top tackle in this draft. Um, started eleven games at left tackle and thirteen games at right tackle in college. So he does have versatility on both the left tackle and right tackle position. He plays with a nasty disposition and gets good push in the run game, flashing the ability to clear out linebackers when climbing to the second level. Very smooth, great with his punch and pass protection, and will be um, a great, great lineman to have in this draft, especially when you are protecting your future quarterback in Anthony Richardson. The Colts drafted the best available tackle on the board and a player that can play both right and left side. And whenever you draft a tackle that can play both left and right side, I think that is a huge plus to have. He improves their depth, which is important considering Braden Smith did miss seven games last season and Con Calves can also play guard. So Great versatile lineman, solid, solid pick with the Colts. And then in the fourth round, they selected Tanner Bartolini. Um, Going to be a center in the NFL. Isn't an overpowering run blocker, but he's very quick to get into position and take out defenders in the run game. Not the most athletic center in the draft, but he does a great job getting set quickly, works his hand inside, and latches onto defenders in pass protection. So Tanner Bartolini is going to be a future center for the Colts and does 
have some Pro Bowl potential. Um, top five center in this draft. Well, he probably let play left guard and right guard, but definitely going to be a top center for this Colts offense. Definitely for the future. Fifth round, Anthony Gold. Since they took care of the wide receiver position earlier and the wide receiver room is pretty much set, I see Anthony Gold being a special team returner for the Colts. Um, he did average you know, 16.2 yards per catch at Oregon State, but he did lead FBS in yards per punt return with 18.6, returned two punts for touchdowns, and was named an All-American punt returner in 2022. Yes, he does have great route running ability, runs away from defenders on crossers, but overall, I think he's going to be a phenomenal choice in special teams in the kickoff and punt return. So I think this was a great special teams kind of pick for the Colts. Round five, they selected safety Jalen Carlisles out of Missouri. Has rare blend of size, speed, and length. Great playmaker who picked off nine passes over the past three seasons. Does a great job tracking the ball. Also has a wide catching radius and can pluck the passes out of the air. So he is a ball hawking safety. He also has experience playing in the box and has great stopping power in the run game. So he's going to be a great, um, solid safety for the Colts, and then they decided to double dip again in the fifth round, about 13 picks later, selecting Jalen Simpson, who is probably a top 10 safety in this draft, does a great job running the quarterback, jumps in front of receivers, and snatches passes out of the air. Big hands, long arms, and picked off four passes in 2023. He is a former corner who closes well and flashes good stopping power as well. So even though he is a former corner, I can see the Colts getting a bit creative with Simpson, maybe having him come in as a nickel or playing back as a deep safety. But overall, I think he could be a great chess piece, versatile safety, and also a great member in the secondary for the Colts. Then in the sixth round, they selected cornerback Micah Abraham. Out of Marshall, undersized with short arms, small hands, but this is where they kind of just boost up the depth. And then last but not least, in round seven, they selected defensive tackle Jonah Lalu. Played 66 games in college, playing for Hawaii for four seasons and Oklahoma for two seasons. Good length, chases with good effort, and has um, great effort. But overall, I think this was a solid, solid draft for the Colts. Um, They took care of key positions. They got top pure edge rusher in the draft, got a great steal in Adonai Mitchell, got a versatile tackle in Gungalves, pure center in Tanner Bartolini, and then double dip in the safety position and boosting up that secondary. I think the Colts did a great job in this draft. Again, just like the Texans, I'm going to have to give this Colts draft a solid, solid B+. Now, the third team that I'm going to take care of is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I got to say, the perfect fit for the Jaguars in the first round was Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. Now, I know a lot of people had the Jaguars going cornerback in the first round, but this was ultimately probably the perfect fit for the Jaguars in round one. Thomas did lead FBS in receiving touchdowns with 17 in 2023. Someone that you're definitely going to expect to come down with a 50-50 ball and win in one-on-one matchups in the red zone. Ran the second fastest 40-yard dash out of receivers at the combine with a 4.33. And definitely a big play waiting to happen. And I'm excited of how he's going to perform at the NFL. Um, a lot of people questioning his route running ability, which I definitely understand. Probably not at the level of Malik Neighbors, but Brian Thomas Jr. is definitely going to take the top off the defense, whether it's on go routes or just a big play waiting to happen. Um, I believe with the Jaguars selecting Brian Thomas Jr. is going to help open up opportunities for Christian Kirk, um, Gabe Davis, Evan Ingram. So overall, not only just Brian Thomas Jr. going to a quality team, having Travis Lawrence as his quarterback. I think this Jaguars offense can be a sleeper, explosive offense in the 2024 NFL season. As long as the offensive line keeps Trevor Lawrence upright, I can see this offense doing 
damage in terms of the pass catchers they have on this team. Perfect range to select Brian Thomas Jr. So overall, it's a great pick for the Jaguars. Then in round two, they selected Mason Smith, defensive tackle out of LSU, Brian Thomas Jr.'s teammate. Um, Smith has outstanding length and versatile strength to anchor in one-on-one situations, whether it's going against tackles, setting the edge, or going up against guards. Um, Smith did suffer a season-ending knee injury in 2023-2022 and didn't look explosive in 2023. But overall, if you were to look at him performing in the 2021 season. Um, He is definitely someone that you would thought that this will be a steal at this range. Um, People are comparing Smith to Chris Jones in terms of his size, quickness, and use of length. And the Jaguars' third biggest need probably was defensive tackle, but Smith probably has the highest potential and upside out of all defensive tackles probably in this draft. Um, And I believe he's someone that's going to learn from Eric Armstead and likely play next to him. And I believe those two will be a great duo on the defensive line, especially um, the Jaguars kind of having their own version of what the 49ers had with Armstead and Buckner in the past. These two defensive tackles are going to not only do damage on the interior um, guards and offensive linemen on the opposing team, but definitely going to allow the edge rushers to get after the quarterback and stop the run. So I think the Jacksonville Jaguars can have a very solid um, front seven. So that'll be a, that that's going to be, uh, I think the Jaguars dig uh, a great pick for Smith. Um, they didn't look explosive. People may think this was a bit of a reach. I think in terms of potential and upside of what he could bring to the table, I think this would be a great value pick for the Jaguars. Then in round three, they selected cornerback Jerrion Jones out of Florida State. And honestly, depending on who you ask, he may have been the best slot corner in the draft. Yes, I know Mike Sanders still is a ball hawk, six interceptions, top corner um, slot in the draft, but Jerry and Jones is definitely up there, especially of how great of a 2023 season he had. Uh, 4.38 40 yard dash. You can definitely see the flashes on tape. Does a great job closing well, breaking passes out in front of him. And he's definitely a threat to get to the quarterback when blitzing off the edge. Um, does a great job tracking the ball and had a team high three interceptions in 2023. He primarily lined up over the slot in 2023, but does have experience playing outside. Um, But me personally, I think he's going to stick to what he knows and stick to him having his best college football season. So he's definitely going to be a top slot option for the Jaguars. Um, This may have been a bit of a reach. Yes, Jerrion Jones did have a great FBS season. And yes, he had a solid combine, but um jones is someone that people did look at him as maybe being a fourth rounder or fifth rounder um but overall very aggressive physical at the line and he's someone that's going to benefit as a nickel and probably won't be used much as an outside cornerback so um definitely got themselves a pure slot corner in this draft then in round four they selected javon foster offensive tackle of missouri Started 39 games over the past three seasons, primarily at left tackle, though he did start two at right tackle in 2020. Aggressive run blocker with explosive power and has great punch in the run game. Um, Has great size to cover up, second level defenders, but overall excellent length. And I believe this was very smart for the Jaguars to kind of bolster up the offensive line, especially with the Jaguars about to give Trevor Lawrence a quite a big of a payday having him as the next franchise quarterback. So definitely going to um, be a force on the offensive line, especially with Lawrence being the franchise quarterback of the organization. Then they selected um, Jordan Jefferson with their second, fourth round pick defensive tackle, quite inconsistent on tape, but definitely has impressive tools. Um, He does have power to stand up and control blockers when he gets his hands inside and does flash ability to shoot gaps and make plays in the backfield. This was more of a depth kind of pick um, for the Jaguars. And then in round five, 
They selected cornerback DeAndre Prince out of Ole Miss. Very versatile corner who had probably the quickest 10-yard split at the combine this year and flashes outstanding burst on tape. Um, he needs to do a better job of wrapping up at times as he does do ta- tends to tackle with the shoulder only. But overall, solid, solid corner who closes well and flashes good stopping power as a, as a tackler. Then with their second fifth-round pick, they selected Kalen Robinson, a speedy kickoff returner. Yes, he is a running back, but he's someone that I do see the Jaguars utilizing as a core special teamer. Speedy kick returner who racked up 897 kickoff return yards over the past two seasons and returned one kickoff 95 yards for a touchdown in 2023. Um, So he's definitely going to be looked at as a special teamer, kickoff returner, running back depth. So um, especially in this day and age, especially with the new kickoff rules, you're definitely going to have to have um, depth at the core special teams and trying to find your next kickoff returner. So um, Kellen Robinson, good choice. Then they got place kicker Cam Little who, Little, who is the most accurate kicker in Razorback history, connecting on 82.8% of his field goals and never missed an extra point over his three-year career. So very important finding an accurate kicker um, because if your kicker can't hit those shots, then that can definitely kill you a bit. And then in round seven with their last pick, they selected Miles Cole. This was a steal. Miles Cole should not have lasted this long in the seventh round. I think he is probably a top 15 edge in this draft. Um, I understand Cole's production didn't match his talent in college, but definitely has impressive traits. Ran an outstanding 40 yard dash for his size and ranked in the top 10 for defensive ends in both jumps. Um, no player at the combine had longer arms. Then him, regardless of position, Cole can shoot his hands, take on blockers, and set the edge against the run and chases with great effort. But overall, I think this was a bit criminal of Miles Cole lasting this long. I think Miles Cole was probably like a fourth rounder, so I am surprised that he lasted to the seventh round. But overall, I think the Jaguars had themselves quite of a good draft, um, as you guys probably see. Most of their draft selections were pretty much draft prospects out of the SEC, especially getting three draft picks out of LSU. Um, besides, you know, the Texas Tech, Miles Cole in the seventh round, but most of their draft picks were out of the SEC. Um, but overall, I think it was a solid pick. I think Brian Thomas Jr. was a perfect fit for this team. Smith is going to be a phenomenal defensive tackle working alongside Armstead and helping that front seven defensively. Jerry and Jones, top slot corner, just may have been a little bit of a reach, but overall, top slot corner in the draft, bolstering up the offensive line, Javon Foster, and then starting to kind of focus on the depth of the Jaguars team. Um, then the Jaguars had solid, you know, first four picks, and then after that, it kind of fell into more of depth picks but overall i'll give the jaguars a solid b not a b plus i don't think they had themselves quite of a you know bet i don't think they had a better draft or similar draft class as like the texans or the colts but i think the jaguars had themselves a quality draft class and took care of um core needs and i believe they may have fulfilled all team needs that they needed to look for in the draft so overall i will give the jaguars a solid just plain b last but not least we're gonna get into the fourth team of the afc south and that is the tennessee titans now in the first round pick seven i'll be honest with you i was very surprised with this pick um selecting jc latham I know the Chargers did select Joe Hall at pick five, so they kind of beat the Titans to the punch for the best pure left tackle in the draft, but um, they did select J.C. Latham. The reason why I was surprised is um, me personally, the Titans did have um, quite of a serious need at the left tackle position, and um, Troy Fatunu was there. Olu was there, so I believe they could have gone with a better option at this pick. 
But I'm sure the Titans offensive linemen did see something in J.C. Latham in which they believed that J.C. Latham was um, a better pick and better option than the other available offensive linemen in the draft. Um, But Latham is a massive right tackle built like an ox and does a great job uh, moving linemen off the ball, plays with an edge and buries defenders when he gets them on when he gets his hands on them. Um, he rarely loses when he wins with his hands in pass protection. So especially um, when he gets his hands on defenders and has great hand placement, he's definitely not going to lose in those reps in pass protections. Has great speed to power ratio and does a great job of changing directions to mirror inside moves once he's locked into pass protection. Um, he did start 25 games at right tackle and did play some guard in a reserve role in 2021, but he is your prototypical right tackle in a power run scheme. Um, I know he did not take much snaps at left tackle, which I said was the Titans biggest need. So if the Titans do plan to play him at the left side, then maybe the fit is a bit questionable and there is a, a development learning curve that's going to be there. Um, but if the Titans do plan to plug him on the right side, then that's where he's probably going to have the most success, especially, you know, with his people moving skills. But overall, I think this was a, to me, slight reach, not a crazy reach, but a bit of a slight reach as the Titans could have selected him if they decided to trade back, but it does take two to tangle to make a trade happen. So I think he could have been there if they did decide to find a trade partner to trade back, or they could have gotten another option at offensive line at this pick, but overall slight reach, but they did have a need at the tackle position and let's we'll see what the titans can do and maybe um convert him as a quality left tackle for the off for the tennessee titans now in round two they did select a massive interior run stopper into von j sweat um top five defensive tackle in this draft um he can drive blockers into the backfield does a great job getting his hands up um he can also be used on offense and Goal line packages, effective lead blocker, and even caught a pass touchdown in 2023. He did have a good enough tape where he could probably be a you know top 50 draft in this class. Um, he did have that legal issue with the DWI in which teams were evaluating his stock. Um, he had a pretty good NFL combine, which boosted his stock, um, but the Titans definitely going to boost up this interior defensive line he could definitely occupy double teams with no problems he could take the center and guard at the same damn time um and he's and i feel like you know six foot five 366 pounds if he could lose maybe another 20 pounds um he can have that dexter lawrence type massive um nose tackle ability but overall um I think the reason may he may have fell down a bit is um, he may not be your everyday three down defensive tackle just due to his um, weight. Um, he can get gassed a little bit, so he's probably gonna just going to be a two down defensive tackle. But if you're looking for someone that's going to, you know, take on double teams and help stop the run, maybe just, you know, pass deflect on the defensive line that this was definitely a solid pick and i believe that sweat is going to be a quality defensive tackle at the next level then in round four they selected linebacker cedric gray out of north carolina very very highly productive inside linebacker who led all power five players in tackles over the past two seasons with 279 tackles this guy has a nose for the ball Very rangy run defender who has great closing speed and has the burst to fill gaps and blow up plays in the backfield. Top five linebacker in the draft easily. Does a great job reading the quarterback in underneath zone. Very competitive matching up with um, running backs and tight ends and man coverage and flashes above ball skills in which he had five interceptions and 18 passes defended at North Carolina. There is a pro comparison to Patrick Queen that is a very high pro comparison but he does have that potential has a nose for the defense great job in pass coverage overall 
above average ball skills, top five linebackers. So getting Cedric Gray around this area, this was tremendous value for the Tennessee Titans. Then in round five, they selected cornerback Jarvis Brownlee Jr. out of Louisville. Such a physical and tough press zone corner. I believe, not too sure if it was the East or West Shrine or the Senior Bowl, but man, he made some money on those reps. I mean, he was taking wide receiver out of their routes and especially beating receivers to their routes. And he did he did show great ability. Flash, he does have tremendous ability to reroute receivers and make it tough for them to get off the line of scrimmage. Does a great job getting depth, ringing the quarterback, and closes well in zone looks. He's definitely not the most natural hands catcher, but he did have six interceptions in college and very competitive at the catch point. Um, after um, his performance, whether it was the East West Ryan Bowl or the Senior Bowl, but I'm surprised he uh, fell down a little bit in the fifth round. Maybe this was the perfect um, like round for him, but he showed out when. He was going against elite competition on those reps, rerunning receivers, jamming them to the line of scrimmage, beating them to their routes. So he's definitely going to be a smart corner at the next level. Um, the Titans did have some difficulties stopping the pass defense. So I believe that Jarvis Brownlee Jr. will come in and step up and help that defense out. So I think it was a solid pick, great value, because I do believe that he will be a quality um, corner at the next level. Then in round six, they selected Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver out of Tulane. Um, honestly, the Titans are quite set at the wide receiver position. They got Burks, Ridley, Hopkins. So they have a nice, you know, core there um, for the Titans. So I can definitely see Jackson being a nice core special teams member, especially in the kickoff and punt return. He did have um, great playmaking ability at Tulane, but he's definitely going to be a dangerous punt returner and can definitely be a dangerous kickoff returner, has great speed and very, very fast enough to make occasional plays down the field if he were to get some reps in the receiving option. So overall, he's a threat after the catch. When the ball's in his hands, he could definitely take the top off. Um, then in round seven, they selected James Williams, safety out of Miami, six foot four, 231 pounds. I think he is too big to play safety, um, but maybe be a bit too small to be an everyday linebacker. Um, so with James Williams having experience as a safety, I can definitely see James Williams being a nickel linebacker. Um, but overall, big frame, tone setter who plays with an edge and provides physical presence over the middle. Um, very violent downhill striker who could definitely knock the ball out of carriers on contact. So he's a definitely a hard-hitting um, safety. He was named safety, but definitely a hard-hitting um, defensive player. Um, he has outstanding length for a safety, which is definitely one of his greatest assets. And I believe with him having um, the experience playing as a safety, and I believe him just playing that nickel linebacker role can definitely help the defense out in pass coverage. But overall, I believe that he's at his best matching up with tight ends and running backs in coverage. So I think that'll be a great, great boost for this defense, whether it's having him line up as a safety if they decide to put him in safety or put him as a nickel linebacker. But overall, I believe he'll be a solid choice and solid defensive player in pass, co pass coverage and on the defensive side. And in round seven, they selected Edge Jalen Harrell out of Michigan, has solid length, change of direction skills, and quickness to develop as a quality pass rusher. Someone that's going to be a rotational piece for this defense. He primarily lined up as an edge rusher, but does have experience playing off the line. Um, gets great depth and does a great job running the quarterback when he does drop back in coverage. But overall, this was a you know quality depth pick for the Titans. But all in all, um, I think this was a unique um, draft class for the Titans. I don't think this was, this was an A-level draft class, or I don't think this was a C or a D. So it wasn't like a horrible draft class, but I think the Titans did just enough to have a solid line, ha have a solid draft class. They did take care of core needs that they needed to take care of. Also, offensive tackle, D tackle, safety, linebacker, and wide receiver. So they did take care of team needs, and they did get some quality choices. But overall, I'll give this Titans draft class a B.
I'll definitely give this draft class a B. Don't think they had a solid draft class that earned them an A or uh, a subpar draft class that got them a C. So I'll give them in the B range. But overall, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please don't give, don't forget to give this video a like. And if you like to watch weekly football content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I do make weekly football content, post videos every Mondays and Fridays. But overall, thank you so much for watching. Hope you subscribe and catch you next week.